is gone. Have you heard this one? What do you call a spaceship that's flying without a pilot? Dangerous. It is worth examining and explaining what is Star Citizen, in case for the last 8 years you somehow missed the information on what it is, how to play it or even if it is a real video game or some kind of browser whale hunting scam. Space whales, uh, do, do we have a name for space whales yet? And apparently even that counting the shitfest that was Odyssey expansion for Elite Dangerous, people continuously flock to Star Citizen. One could say that Elite's failure actually attracted those disillusioned players. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, surprisingly, the answer about Star Citizen is not that simple as you may think. But before we go, as always, support content creators on Patreon. So, uh, if you enjoy my work, do check out my link in the description. Okay, then well, let's start with the topic of the video itself. What is Star Citizen? For those that don't really care for nuance, it will be just easier for me to say it is a video game. A playable, functional video game as you can tell from the footage that I'm showing right now. It walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, and it fucks like a duck. Well then, how do you buy it or download it? Well, the answer here already gets muddy. See, you first make an account, then you buy a ship package. See, Star Citizen, well, it's not really a game. Well, not yet. I guess I know what I said, and that was for the sake of brevity so that the first timers don't really get confused, but sorry, here you are. In reality, what Star Citizen is to this day is a project to make a video game. In fact, two of them. In the current version, to access what laughingly can be called a game or playable alpha, you can't just buy it. You see, Star Citizen operates as a Kickstarter, a crowdfunding project. If you pledge a certain amount of money, you get certain perks unlocked to you. One of those perks usually is access to playable alpha. I have a feeling it's done for legal reasons, or rather bureaucratic bullshit, but there you go. Still, you don't care about that, you just want to play it or at least try it out. Well, you still have to spend money on one of those packages that include access to this laughable playable alpha. Well, I guess luckily they have promptly displayed two cheapest packages, both worth about $50 front and center. They include a crappy ship, some other stuff that you don't care about, and the aforementioned access for the alpha. Remember, there are packages and macro transactions worth even thousands of fucking dollars. I shit you not, so double check before you spend money. It is super easy to get turned around, and it may be by design. However, before you depart with your doubloons, it is worth mentioning that Star Citizen tends to go free, uh, or rather opens its gates for the public, to try it out from time to time. No money spending needed. These so-called free-fly weekends, or weeks sometimes, allows you to try out this alpha, so if you're patient, I really do recommend waiting till then. Try it out first, and then if you really believe in the project as a whole, only then spend money. Now, as for the things that you should really know about Star Citizen as a whole, well, it was first announced in 2012 in GDC, yes, nearly 9 years ago, and during this time it was actively being developed. The first quote-unquote playable versions were released around 2014. On YouTube, they constantly post videos on development process. Personally, most of this information is a complete waste of your time and borders on information saturation that one could say is deliberately inflated so that the smooth brains can constantly claim that, well, they are actively reporting on what's being done, while in reality, barely anything is moving forward. The reason I say that is, well, because it's not only been 9 years, but also over 380 million dollars already invested into this whole project. With so much time, lots of developers, so much funding, glossy YouTube TV show and much more, you'd think that it's nearly done, right? I mean, they report so much on what is actively being done, right? So, where is the progress? Well, that's the thing, while they actively report and portray working on it so hard on social media, in this 
playing Apple Alpha, you see very little change, and as a longer time observer, I am frankly questioning not only release time, but also focus of the project, as to this day, none of the core systems or features are 100% working. As such an observer, I am compelled to ask, if you can't get a core part like, say, physics engine done 100%, why bring out more useless or tacky features? Anyhow, that's my personal gripe. The point is, it's been such a long time and a lot of money spent on it already, but what they show us, what they give us to play around with, looks like a half-boiled, but very pretty, raw chicken. Well then, what is the big appeal? Ah yes, undoubtedly back in the day, and to some extent even today, it looks amazing. Yes, there are a lot of places that already are showing some age in the graphics, but the amount of detail that has been put into these ship models and stations and a few other places cannot be denied. It does spark a, well, a real promise, at least visually. And yeah, I could sit here and like a sycophant of Star Wars or Chris Roberts regurgitate the bullshit fanboyisms, but for that visual masturbatory content I'll defer to my content creator peers. I'll just leave it at, yes, it looks really good. And surprisingly they have planned for extra layers underneath just the visuals, which you don't often see for many games. And that is the promise, the great looks with underlying depth to it, the usability and the interaction. As for the other questions that often get asked, well, well, what kind of PC do I need to run this playable alpha? Will it be a beast PC or can I run it with my middle of the ground budget build? Well, the thing is, no matter what hardware you have, this alpha ain't gonna be running on any acceptable levels. Yes, there are minimum specs, and especially with graphics cards, if you don't have 6GB of video RAM, well, forget about not stuttering. And anything below two CPU cores ain't gonna run this thing. Obviously, this is marked as an alpha and blah blah blah, it's not finished, blah. Even the best of computers, an unoptimized mess is an unoptimized mess. I mean, just look at Elite Odyssey. <laughs> Zing! Seriously, you'll be looking at maybe an average of 30 to 40 frames, depending on the hardware, I don't know. But with that sort of a average frame rate, you still will be enjoying an inconsistent frame rate, which is far worse than a consistent, say, 30 frames a second that can be enjoyed. I mean, just look at console peasants. Haha, <laughs> zing again! But that's the thing, you can suddenly just out of nowhere drop to 10, maybe 5 or worse frames a second. And it is a pretty horrible experience, especially after you go back up to 80 all of a sudden for no reason. And then of course you have plenty of dipshits who say that, well, I'm not running into problems or having good frames. Those folks are either with low standards or simply disingenuous as hell with no real data to back those claims up. Okay, but what about the Squadron 42? What is it? Ha, ah, now here we come to the other half of the Star Citizen. So, in reality, Star Citizen is a poster boy for the gameplay, the online multiplayer, persistent sandbox game, while Squadron 42, on the other hand, is the supposed second game. Or, or was it the first game? Uh, it depends on whom you ask this. Regardless, Squadron 42 is the single-player campaign story-driven thing, movie video game that Chris Roberts hired those incredible named actors for, and most likely blew all of his money for it. But that's just a joke. Squadron 42 is a very behind-the-doors project that very little info has been released about. Even the bigger supporters are criticizing developers for not telling what is going on in comparison to how much information is given about Star Citizen. And to this day, well, we still know very little about it. And sure, these days we've gotten a roadmap for it, but it's still very behind the doors. Squadron 42 generally is the big initial selling point back in 2012, but over the years people have gotten more interested in the multiplayer version, so that that has become the real focal point. Not to mention the fact that not only you have more information about it, but you can also quote unquote play it. And thus we come to the biggest question. When will it be done? 
Now that, unfortunately, no one knows. The fact is, some say that the company is making so much money already, simply selling ships and those super expensive packages to, well, never stop. Yes, that may be an option, or it's simply too far gone. Too many promises, too many features, too many things to do to actually tell when and if ever Star Citizen or Squadron 42 will ever release. Regardless of all that, currently there there has been no information or even a hint that a release might be around the horizon. Now, if you got a chance to experience Star Citizen for free on one of those weekends, you may notice how stable, how playable, how finished all of it feels and looks from an actual video game. From my perspective, I can say that it's a good three years at the bare minimum, but oh, who knows? That's very optimistic speculation on the best of the days. So, if you wanted to know what is Star Citizen, well, it looks like a game, it acts like a game, it certainly sells like a game, well, even talks like a game. But it's not a game. Well, at least, not yet. If you choose to spend money on it, know that what you will get is work in progress that simply may not work one day, then works the next, and again bricks itself the next after that. It's something that is filled with game-like features that, well, really are placeholders and actually aren't made to be enjoyable sometimes. Just something to test a feature. Yet among all of that, you may notice a glimmer of beauty that no other game has. Maybe even a dream. Well, if you're a dreamer. My only caution is to be skeptical as fuck and not drink the Kool-Aid. Still, in the end, if you enjoyed this sort of a look into Star Citizen, well, I do highly recommend watching video series by Bucha called Sunk Cost Galaxy. There are more shady things about the company and its practices that you should be aware of, but for now, this video will suffice. If you got other questions about Star Citizen, I'll do post them in the comment section and who knows, I might make a part 2 or something out of it. But for now, if you want to support something that is finished and delivers something great, consider becoming a patron. There will be a link in the description. Now I'm off to slide down the stairs like there is no tomorrow. You know what I kinda miss? Blacking out while crouching too much. That was funny.